All right, gentlemen and ladies, let's do this. Welcome to uh, the second one-off. HAL Laboratories week. This is Air Fortress, a phenomenally good little uh, action game from the mid-80s on NES. Heavily English storyline. This game's got some pretty good music. Um, it has really, really nice gameplay. We'll get into it. So there's eight air fortresses. There's actually a second quest with eight more. But here's what we can see. The first part of every level is basically a shooter section. And in the shooter section, what your goal is, is to knock out as many of the enemies as possible and collect as many power-ups as possible. Now here's the real kicker. The power-ups don't do anything for you in the shooter section. <laughs> Nothing at all. But you need them. Oh god, yes, you need them. All these obstacles are dangerous. They will kill you in one shot. You get three lives and then you have to continue. Continues are unlimited, but put you back to the beginning of the shooter stage. Which is a problem later in the game. And here's why. Well, you'll see why in a few. So most of the enemies don't drop anything, but occasionally they do, and it is a life it can be a lifesaver. You see that I'm gaining E and B, that stands for energy and bombs. And what those are used for. Here, we'll get there in a second. Almost there. I think. There might be like one more thing group of enemies to deal with. Nope, okay. So, the power-ups that you get in this section of the level are used in the second section of the level, which is basically a labyrinth, uh, a, la a labyrinth hunt. It's amazingly good. Alright, so we've infiltrated the Air Fortress. Now, the first couple of Air Fortresses are really simple in layout. They're just kind of tutorials, basically. Back in the day when tutorials weren't actually very common. I mean, you can tell how old this game is this because the regular attack is the A button, not the B button, which is... which became pretty standard a couple of years into the NES life cycle. B attack, A is jump. Here you control your movement with just the directional pad, and you shoot regular shots with A, and if you need one... We'll get to a place in a second. Hold on. If you need one, you can use a bomb by hitting B. As I said, the first level is extremely easy. It does not... It belies what this game will become by the time we get to the fifth and sixth fortresses. Which we probably won't do today, but, you know... If you're gonna play this game, and I recommend it highly... You should, uh, you should play through it to the, to the bitter end. Because the gameplay gets... The Air Fortress's interiors get insane around, uh around 6 and 7. I th I think 8 is a little bit simpler, but has, like, tougher enemies, basically, but... Yeah, it gets rough. Fast. Another cool thing, no enemy respawns except for one specific type, which we'll see in a minute. Certain enemies drop power-ups. They're pretty rare. Um, those butterflies frequently drop power-ups. Um, a couple other ones do, too. So, energy is your life force, obviously, but you use it up by shooting and by moving. So, you need to stand still to let it recharge to its maximum. 
this can be a problem because if you're trying to dodge enemies that are attacking you, you're losing energy as they're hitting you, and your attempts to dodge further reduce your energy. It's beautiful! Okay, so here's where we're gonna start using bombs. We've got these little reactors that shoot homing shots whenever you shoot them. And, dang it! Power-ups don't carry on, carry over between levels, so we're probably gonna be fine. Yeah. So the goal in each air fortress is to take out the main reactor. That's what this is. It takes a couple of bombs to knock out, and doesn't have any... You know, the rest of the fortress is its defenses. And then after you take it out, you have to get to the, uh, you know, light ship right here, of which there's only one exit. And this one's easy, right? It's just like right there, like whatever. <clears throat> But you can see the lights go out, the music changes, and we'll see this in some of the later, in a couple of later levels, but things actually start to break, well, I mean, they start to put in some cool effects. For, for early NES, I mean, heck yeah. <clears throat> also, I don't know if you can see it on the, uh, the screen, but... The stars in the, like, stage map screen are all doing that, you know, NES 60 hertz interpolated flickering thing, which makes them, you know, look a little cooler than, than they do on uh, standard output. Okay, so there are a couple of power-ups that can be useful here. Here's a shield, which is nice. Shields are good. gathering energy. There's another one that looks like a cross that basically uh, knocks out all the enemies on the screen. But the E's and B's are only useful in the infiltration section, so... And then the enemies get a little bit harder as you go on. Um, nice. Eventually they'll start shooting bullets at you and stuff as they fly toward you, so it can get very... Uh, Now, there's another thing to note, is that you only get one life in the infiltration section. If you die in the infiltration section, it's back to the start of the level. All the way to the start. So, doing things right in the flying section can be extremely important. already see that the levels are starting to get a little bit more complex. Multiple uh, elevators, uh, one-way teleporters, we'll start to see those. And the enemies are going to get harder, and we're going to start seeing the enemies that respawn, which are basically clones of you. Or, you know, they're, they have the same equipment. And they are dangerous. They are not fun to fight. And then there's a little bit of... It's kind of cool. There's a little bit of physics to shooting and flying and stuff like that. It has a good feel to it. I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's just... It just feels right, you know? As far as back in the day, these old games got the controls just right. Encouraging me to use up my bombs there. 
I don't have many. You know, it's kind of luck of the draw. Um, there's a few of the power-ups in the flying sections are always there, but anything that you get from enemies are highly randomized. <clears throat> Sometimes it can pay to be a little patient. shooting can help you avoid shots from enemies. You kinda gotta get used to that. But like I said, the controls in this game just feel right. They're simple, they get to the point. Now this game also kinda suffers a little bit from the scrolling not far ahead enough kind of problem that we saw in Blaster Master. You know. We get some of these guys that can only be taken out by bombs. They shoot homing shots, which you can avoid by cleverly choosing when to move. I should have. If you stay in the elevator, you're not vulnerable, at least for that moment. escape. That's not ominous at all. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Again, pretty easy. That teleporter was a two-way, so it's not too bad. This one's one way. And these little traps are not that dangerous. They're only really bad if they actually catch you and crush you. And when, even when they do that, they just kind of drain health from you slowly. Still, in the later levels, every little bit counts. This guy. So these guys respawn. They generally take about a, about a bomb to knock out. Some of the later ones are even tougher than that. But the main problem that they have is that they respawn. And that is scary later in the game. Oh no, I'm out of bombs. Yeah, so now that I'm out of bombs, I kind of have to just barrel through all of those, uh, what do you call them? What would you call those, like... Sub-reactors. Now, the lights go out. The emergency lights on the elevators come on and flash. Which is kind of cute. But the really cool part is what happens after about 45 seconds. Yeah, stuff starts to shake. And there's a little bit of a audio thing that goes on. And it actually gets worse as you get closer to the deadline. And yes, there is a deadline. <laughs> if you don't make it through and out fast enough... You have to start over again.
But again, fortunately this one's pretty easy. Yeah. You know, the screen shakes and it makes a little fuzzy noise and... Let's see, where is it? It gets a little worse, too. Eh, whatever. We'll see it eventually. Well, maybe. We'll probably go through four fortresses today. If I make it. Or to, like, first game over. It's a good game. You, you should give it a shot if you if you're, if you watch this and you think that it looks fun. And it is fun. And it gets hard later on. Like, the sixth air fortress, I think... I think the first time I did the sixth air fortress, I had to do, like... 10 tries or something like that. I kept getting killed by those uh, spacemen in, in, in the latter half of the in infiltration section. I mean, they're just brutal. They, they, they have different colors, and the different color ones are even harder. So it's like, no, I, I don't want them to be any harder, but they're harder. Oop, these guys. It's pretty easy to get killed by these guys. They move quickly enough that you can't really dodge around them. Or rather, you can dodge around them, but you get, can get cornered pretty easily. <clears throat> and it's not too fast or anything, it's just that... That is, the scrolling is not too fast. But it's just kind of like a... Oh boy. Yeah! So somehow you get three lives on the air... on the light ship. Which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. But once you infiltrate... Yeah. Ugh. And sometimes the enemies just pop up. And it's like, oh crap, now! Unfortunately, the common idea in Gradius to uh, have like a group of five enemies and the last one you kill sends it sends out a uh... come on, dang it! The last one you kill sends out a power up is not observed in this game. That was an innovation by Konami, or I mean, maybe it was. I guess the question is, did our type come out first, and did they do that first? Because our type was Irem. They shoot fire, which does a lot of damage. And they move almost as fast as you do, so they're, it's very hard to get far enough away to um, take aim at them. And now I'm gonna wait for the shot. And then I go. The yellow headed uh, things don't move, and they only shoot like one shot every five seconds or so. Um, I think this is the last level where we see them. <laughs> They get rid of them pretty quickly, because they're just too easy. Oh boy. Oh, and then we have the jumping dudes. Those jumping dudes are really irritating. Alright, so now we've got two paths to possibly take, right? So, a good thing about this game is that, ex you know, the enemies, except for those space uh, spacemen type enemies, none of the enemies respawn, which means that you can kind of use it as a trail of breadcrumbs, if you will. This. Okay, there's my escape. That's... Good to know. Oh boy. Here's another one. 
And it was a one way, so I have to take this as far as it goes, basically. On the plus side, those enemies are pretty close to harmless. They can, you know, grab 10 hit points from you, which is not usually that much. Unless you're deep in the bowels of one of the harder areas. And these guys are not particularly difficult, as long as you have bombs. And then here's another... It may be another one way. Where does this take me? Yeah. That's a two-way. But here's the, um... Now, you'll notice... That there's not any way for me to... Oh. These guys didn't spawn in the first place? That's kinda weird. They spawn on the way back. That's interesting. That's not common. Okay. No, but this isn't... Again, this isn't too hard because it takes me back most of the way rather quickly. Whoa. I like the acceleration on those homing shots. They get moving pretty quick eventually. Oh, boy. Now, on the plus side, the, um, the shaking of the screen doesn't seem to affect movement me measurably. Which is, I think, a blessing. I mean, it, it kind of pulls out of the uh, realism a little bit, but it makes it a little bit less ridiculous later on. Oh man. This is where stuff starts to get real. One thing to note, I think I have, um... Ah, heck. Uh, yeah, so don't try to talk while playing shooter portions. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is, but I think that the, the ROM that I have has slightly different, um, text compared to the cartridge that I have. So I don't know. And then I actually have one of the Japanese ROMs too, and I think the text is even more Englishy. Like I think they fixed it a little bit. But I don't know. There's some kind of version issue that I Oh, that's game over. Okay. But it has a password system. Uh, which is nice, because this game takes a decent amount of time to get through. The later fortresses can take. 10, 15 minutes, I think, at least. I guess I've never timed it. Fortress 6 is really stupid long. Oh man, bad timing there. I'm not sure how you're supposed to shoot that one, because it's not like it's in a place where you can get behind it at all. I mean, unless I'm wrong about, like, the walls being dangerous to cross over, but I'm pretty sure that they kill you. Otherwise, why would they be there? Oh boy. Shield, 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 shield. Wait, 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 go. The problem is that it would be fine if I just had to dodge all the enemies, right? But what I actually have to do is try to shoot as many of them as possible to get power-ups. So there's a really nice dynamic there where you're like, oh, should I dodge this guy or should I shoot this guy? Can I dodge this guy? Are they all going to shoot bullets at me all at the same time like that? You know, is it going to drop energy or bombs or what? Oh, man. 
Whoa, did you see? Wow. <laughs> God, I love this game. <laughs> this is one of those games I, like, saw on, like, a page of Nintendo Power, and I'm like, this game looks really cool. But then, what did I do? I got this game confused with a different shooter, and I kept finding copies of that other shooter and playing them and saying, this game isn't what, it, what I remember was on the magazine. The magazine had you, like, running around inside these things, and this is just a shooter. But I could swear that, yeah, it was Alpha Mission. Alpha Mission was the game that I mistook for this. And eventually I realized that the game that I had been trying to find was not Alpha Mission, or rather, oh no, was not Alpha Mission, but rather was Air Fortress. And of course, I mean, you know, this was the... I mean, I think I got my copy of this game in the mid-90s or something like that. I was a fairly late comer to it. It was well in the days of, like, you know, Funko Land. It might even have been that. No, no. I bought this game from, like, a, a GameStop or a Funko Land or something. Before they all became GameStop, maybe. And when they still had NES games. I remember fondly my time in Funko Land as a kid. They used to give you these, like, little newspapers that just had, like, every NES and SNES and Genesis game on them. Every single one, and a price for all of them. And some of the prices were really, 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 really good. Okay. Fire breather. So here they start really increasing the number of potential paths. And realistically, there's a certain amount of wisdom to clearing out a path and trying to figure out Like, this looks like it's already cleared, because there's loops and stuff. Yeah, this is cleared already. I was already through here, right? Yeah, totally. 100%. Those respawn, but yeah. Clearly, I'm going, I've gone the wrong way. Okay. Gonna need a little thought here. Can't just, you know, coast through this level. Okay, so here's the bottom of this side of the elevator. It looks like there's basically two main elevators in this level. One on the left and one on the right. Oh good, bombs, I can use that. That's a dead end, because this game loves dead ends later in its gameness. Yeah, fun co What? Complete dead end? Ah. Oh. I remember getting a copy of Metal Gear for NES from Funko Land for, like, three dollars. <laughs> okay, so that's already been cleared. That's already been cleared. And I can't go further up there, so that must be where I started. So that means that the path that I need to take is based on the left elevator, for better or worse. Basically, maybe I should start from the bottom and move my way up. Because if I go up, this just takes me to the... So that's where you start. Then I go here. And then there's two ways to go, which makes things even worse, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, by the way, um... No invincibility frames when you take a hit. It looks like you get invincibility frames, but no. You're just, it's just telling you that you're taking damage. <laughs> Which is a big problem with some of those uh, suited enemies later on, because they just they just basically run into you and drain your health like you wouldn't believe. Okay, so this is good and bad, right? Well, I don't know. Should we try for it? Alright, let's try for it. 
Oh, crap. It puts me at the... Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, we know where I am. That's a good start, right? It's a dead end that I've already dealt with. Oh, it's been a while since I did this level, but if I remember correctly, I think the bottommost path out of the um, left elevator is the way to go to get to the escape. But we'll see. You only get... I think I've timed it before. You get about 2 minutes and 45 seconds before everything is completely destroyed. Uh... Um... Oh, that's really, really bad, isn't it? And that's not really a lot of time, honestly. Like, you don't... You don't... It's not enough time to do any exploring, that's for sure. You kind of have to get it right. Oh, it's a dead end. I'm out. Maybe it's the second one from the bottom? See, this is the level where you're supposed to learn find the exit before you shoot the reactor. Oh. Now, if I back off, he's gonna respawn. And there might be another one, actually. Yeah, there is. Yeah, look at how fast that drains my health. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Is this good or bad? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. If, if this is wrong, I'm dead. Oh, man. This looks really bad. No! No, that's it! Can I make it? Yes! Just made it. <sighs> so, I guess we'll pause, stop there. That's Air Fortress. It's another game by HAL Laboratories. It's an NES game. It's fantastically good for an early NES action game. Like, I just love it. It's beautiful. If, if, you, if you watch this and this looks like it would be interesting to you, give it a shot. It is worth playing. Even now. Like, even now. All right. Well, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll have another HAL game on Friday. I'm trying to figure out what exactly... Um, I mean, it's not really like it's going to be a big surprise. I'm actually thinking about doing part of the second chapter of Arcana, uh, since I did that as a one-off a while back, and chapter one of that, uh, which would actually be pretty fun. I love dungeon crawlers, so Arcana is always fun to go through. But uh, I'll see what I have in my uh, in my uh, box o cartridges, and I don't know. Is Lolo a HAL game? I'm not sure. Anyway, anyway, I will see you all next time.